pretty easy pre-Thanksgiving Day class. Okay, so where are we in the class? Week 15A. So we're, we're coming down to the nitty-gritty here. We have, I think, six more lectures. No, uh, yeah, six more lectures. I think there's six more lectures. So we'll have one on, um, or maybe five more lectures. It's either five or six more lectures. Basically, Wednesday, we'll have our portfolio review day as a, about a 10th reminder that we'll have our portfolio review day on Wednesday. I'd recommend, uh, well, you'll need to submit your current, whatever your progress portfolio is, you'll need to submit that to Canvas. Um, I will then pull that up on my laptop and I usually have you come up to me. Uh, we'll look at every single page, we'll draw on it, we'll sketch on it, and then I'll save it and I'll email it to you. So you have a digital copy of your markups, okay? I'd also recommend, uh, if you can, if you had access to a printer, to print it out as well. Having the paper copy is nice to sketch on, scribble on, we can do whatever we want to it. Um, sometimes it's just easier having uh, the printed copy versus the digital, but we'll be, hopefully all be prepared with both. All right? So reminder that that is on Wednesday. Uh, so hopefully we'll have a nice, hopefully better attendance than today, even though I'm not uh, really counting on it. But uh, that'll be a nice review day of everyone's portfolio, and that will basically set you up for the final submission. Okay? Um, so today, what are we doing today? Today we're going to continue with SketchUp. We're going to learn how to import CAD files into SketchUp and learn how to start modeling from that CAD file. Some of you may already know how to do that. If so, fantastic. Uh, hopefully you'll learn a couple new things today. Um, but it's a nice, what we'll, what we'll look at today is a nice little introduction to a lot of the times how I, I believe the design process really works. As even in my own office, we very rarely, in fact, I don't know if I've ever actually just started designing in SketchUp. I usually, it always usually starts from a sketch or a CAD file or something like that, where we got some actual, um, what, we, what we knew as an actual accurate file. Because you'll learn with, with, with SketchUp that SketchUp isn't the most accurate it can be, it can be very accurate if you're very careful about how you draw and you're very orderly and you manage your, your files correctly. But it could be, uh, it could be very, it's very easy to accidentally veer off course and next thing you know all your dimensions are a little funky or, or uh, you're pushing and pulling your surfaces the wrong dimensions. So it is actually really nice to work off of a CAD file and then import it into SketchUp. So. Uh, last class, I mentioned one of the features. One of the features about the pro version of SketchUp versus SketchUp Make is I, I believe one of the limitations of SketchUp Make is that you cannot import a CAD file. If I'm wrong, correct me, but I'm pretty sure that's, that's a feature of SketchUp Pro is that you can import and export CAD files, which is nice. So uh, it's a nice feature of having the of having SketchUp. You know, if you do want to spend the money on Pro, you spend the two or three hundred bucks on it. It's not like SketchUp really changes. As it's not like you need to go buy the new file, the new program every single time it comes out. So, you know, in, in my office, we buy it like every three or four years or something like that, just in case there's a few nice updates. It's, but most of the time, it's you know, like AutoCAD, it's it's about the same every every new every new year. Okay, let me turn off my phone. So let's go ahead and, uh, and move forward. So right now, everybody should have something that looks about like this, okay? Now, I think most, when, when I, earlier when I talked about creating these elevations, we actually copied the floor plan over four times. We rotated each of those floor plans so that we could draw all of the elevations on a single plane, okay? That's fantastic. Today, we're gonna, we're gonna change it up just a little bit so that it's easier to actually model in SketchUp, okay? So another way that some of you may have done the elevation exercises is you may have actually drawn them uh, so that you had one floor plan and you actually drew your ray lines uh, like such where you started to draw them off in this direction and you actually drew your, your, your elevations either upside down or off to the side. Some people will draw them basically in a radial dimension as well. If you did that already, great. You're already one step ahead today. Uh, if not, what we're going to do is we're going to start out by actually rotating these so that when we import it into SketchUp, all of our elevations are facing the face that we're going to be working on. Okay? So 
It is also possible to technically uh, do this in SketchUp as well. Me, preferably, I like to do it in, in AutoCAD. So you can see here that I've just drawn a couple of ray lines just to uh, give myself some, some reference points of where my faces will line up, okay? So I'm just gonna go ahead and draw a few of these ray lines. Everyone knows the tool for that, uh, like so, so that I can first by start off by taking uh, my first elevation, okay? I'm not gonna worry about copying my siding, okay? Because the siding we're gonna end up adding in Photoshop at a later point as well. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and deselect the baseline and I'm gonna deselect the hatching. Okay, so that all that I get is my outer perimeter lines and my windows, okay? Or any other details that you might have associated with your elevation. But I don't need the, uh, I don't need my, my hatching or the baseline, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and move this up and away from, in fact, let's go ahead and just delete this, uh, this hatching for now. If you wanna save this as, go ahead and save it as a new file, okay? So that you don't accidentally delete your, you're hatching and then realize that you don't have that anymore. So I'm going to call this cabin SketchUp base. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and save that into today's folder. Now I can take what I have here. I'm going to group it. All right. So this is now just one file. I'm going to go ahead and rotate this 90 degrees like so. And I'm going to go ahead and move it up to the point so that this snaps with the perspective ray line. Okay, see how that line now relates to uh, the edge of the building here? All right, it also relates to the edge of this side, so that's good. And if I was to draw another ray line, you would see that uh, it also relates to this face as well, so that's good. All right, you can go ahead and delete these, don't need them anymore. And I'm gonna go ahead and draw a, a new baseline, okay? New baseline here, like so, all right? So that's all we need to do for that elevation, all right? If you wanna move it a little closer, where it actually is in reference to the floor plan doesn't really matter for SketchUp, okay? Uh, I just, I'm kind of making it so that's all, for the most part, fairly equal. All right, and I'm gonna do that same process to all, all four of my elevations so that they all radiate around each of the perspective sides, okay? So we'll select that plan here, or that elevation, we'll go ahead and group it. So I just select it all, typed in group, and I'm gonna move it up to the top here, and we'll rotate this one, RO, that's the shortcut, rotate 180 degrees, and I'll move it so that it snaps into our ray lines. Okay, I'll have it about like that. All right, we'll delete those ray lines as soon as we're done, and again, we're gonna add our baseline here at the bottom. Okay, and let's do that one more time. Bring that over here, let's group that elevation, rotate it. RO is a shortcut for rotate. And let's align this with our ray lines, like so. Oh, actually let's move that over one time. Okay, any questions about that? Pretty, pretty straightforward, okay? So we're gonna go ahead and delete those ray lines, and then of course, one last time, let's add our base, our baseline, okay? So that all of our elevations now radiate around that original floor plan, okay? So what I need for this SketchUp file is one floor plan and all four of your elevations radiated around the floor plan, okay? You're not gonna need all four because we're only gonna use one of them. Okay, so as soon as you're done with that, I'm gonna go ahead and do control save. We'll save that so that it's uh, updated and ready to bring into SketchUp, all right? I'm gonna go ahead and minimize AutoCAD and let's open up SketchUp, all right? Remember that you're gonna need to choose your template and you'll wanna choose architectural template feet and inches, all right? So as soon as you get SketchUp open, what we're gonna do is we're gonna to wanna to import that CAD file into our SketchUp file, okay? To do that, we're gonna to go to File, and we're gonna to go to import, all right? And we're gonna to go to today's folder and we're gonna find that CAD file that we just created. So week 15A, let's change the file type to uh, AutoCAD or DWG, all right? AutoCAD files DWG. So there it is right there, SketchUp base. And I'm gonna go ahead and click on import. 
All right. So when you click on import, you're going to get this a little this little little box here that says what you imported. Okay. Unfortunately, when you bring CAD files from AutoCAD to SketchUp, uh, it does a good job, but it's always a little sketchy. That's, I guess that's like a, a SketchUp pun, if you will. That's the best joke I'll have for probably at least the next month. But uh, it, it, it doesn't always do the greatest job importing the CAD file, but you'll see here it, you know, it did its best job in actually breaking it down into, into really how you had modeled it into SketchUp. So a lot of what you'll notice today is that the better and more and the more cleanly organized your AutoCAD file is, meaning that things are properly uh, in the right layers. Okay, so, you know, even at the end of the semester, I always see people that still model the entire thing on layer zero, and they never took the time to properly organize their layers. If you did take the time to properly organize your layers, you'll notice that these next few steps will be a lot easier for you. Okay, so you'll see there that we have 21 layers. All right, those are all of my elevation and floor plan layers that I created. We have a couple blocks, we have a couple, we have 208 total lines in this file and 31 polylines, okay? Brian's gonna have a, a, a tough time with this one because that, that line number, because of all of his 3D modeling he did, is gonna be something like 150,000. And a SketchUp file is gonna have a hard time with that, with uh, maneuvering as well. But basically it breaks it down into exactly how you organized it uh, in AutoCAD. So we'll go ahead and hit close. And there is your, uh, let's see, why did our floor plan not import here? Let's just take a look at this real quick. So I'm gonna go over to layers, all right? And I noticed here that, let's actually break down the layers and, and how this all works. So just like all the other pieces of software that we've talked about so far this semester, SketchUp also has the ability to organize everything in layers. Okay, so you'll see here that all of our layers that we had in AutoCAD are now also inside SketchUp. Okay, so your ability to turn them on and off and also to draw on those exact same layers would be the same in SketchUp as it was in AutoCAD. So you can see why I mentioned that being well organized in AutoCAD will help you in that everything will be nicely organized already in the right layers in SketchUp. Okay, if they're not, you'll need to take some time probably cleaning up this file and organizing them into the correct layers. So why don't we see our floor plan here? Let's, uh, let me uh, take a little look at this. Some of these aren't visible. Some of them might be white. Give me just one second here. Figure out why this isn't showing up here. Okay, so the reason why I don't, and let's just test this to find out. So this is good that you guys are encountering this because a lot of you guys probably did this. So our floor plan didn't pop up, and my guess is because I have currently have that floor plan xref'd into, into this file right here, all right? So if I type in xr, xref, you'll notice that this floor plan is currently xref'd into this file. So what I need to do is I need to bring in a non-xref version of this floor plan. So I'm gonna click on this, and I'm gonna right click, and I'm gonna click on open xref, all right? Continue opening DWG file, okay? And I'm gonna select this floor plan, all right? I'm gonna select the floor plan, and I'm gonna copy it. I'm gonna go back to that SketchUp base file, and I'm gonna to go to the clipboard, and I'm gonna paste as a block, okay? You can also just do paste, it's not really super critical for for what it is that we're doing, wanting to export this or import this into SketchUp, all right? And now, let me just create a little line here just so that I have a reference point into where I can bring this back. So I'm gonna get rid, I'm gonna delete that xref, grab my new block that I just created, I'm gonna type in M for move, I'm gonna grab that same base point that I had just created, I'm gonna bring it back over here to that line, okay? That's why I drew that line is so that I had a reference point on to where I'd want to bring the new floor plan back, okay? So this should be better. I'm gonna go ahead and save this, and let's bring this back into SketchUp. So I'm gonna delete this file, and let's re-import that. Come on now, okay, there we go. So I deleted that file, and let's go through that same process. File, import, all right, let's do SketchUp base. Import. Notice that we have a lot more lines, a lot more layers now that we didn't have that floor plan as an XREF. Okay, so go ahead and hit close and voila. All right, so that's what we're looking for here. 
So now we can actually start moving forward with actually assembling the 3D model of our cabin. Okay, so, so for those of you that came in a little bit late, uh, what we're gonna be spending most of our time today is, is creating as much of this uh, 3D model of this cabin as you can. Your goal by the end of today should, uh, should be to get the exterior shell completed as close as possible, okay? You don't necessarily have to focus on all the windows at this point. Next class on, uh, maybe even on Wednesday, I may even take about 15 minutes to show you the next step, or if not, if I decide to stick with just the portfolios, uh, we'll look at this next Monday, but we'll actually start to refine the elevations by adding all the little details. But for the most part, you wanna to try to finish the general massing of the SketchUp file today. And so your roof, all of your walls, steps, railings, things like that, and the next class will add the finer details of the elevations. But if you're a really quick SketchUp modeler, I know some of you might be, you might you know, absolutely blaze through all of this, then feel free to jump a little bit of ahead, okay? But today I'm gonna focus mostly on the massing of, of the building, okay? So the first thing that we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna wanna clean up this file just a little bit, okay? So right now we see all of these layers, okay? And we wanna make sure that everything that we see here uh, is grouped appropriately, okay? So I'm gonna click on that CAD file like we have so far. Notice that right now it is all one group, okay? I'm gonna right click on that CAD file and I'm gonna click on Explode, okay? I'm gonna click on Explode so that everything that I have here is all an individual line, okay? And as soon as we get that, all right, I can go ahead and group these individual components into their own pieces, okay? So I can select these, uh, this elevation, all right? I can go ahead and do a file, uh, go ahead and select all of this. Whoops, come on now, select it all, right click, and I can go ahead and group it, make group, okay? I'm gonna do the same thing to all of our other pieces so that our elevations and our floor plan all have their own group, okay? So let's go ahead and right click, make group. Right click, make group. Same thing up here, right click, make gr group. And let's do the same thing with our floor plan. Right click, make group. Uh, let's see, make group, where'd it go? Oh, it's already grouped. Oh, it's already grouped because, anybody have a guess to why it's already grouped? Because I had made it a, uh, yes, because I made it a block in AutoCAD. So just like in AutoCAD, when objects are a block, they will also be imported basically as, but not a block, but it'll actually already be a group, okay? So um, I'll, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna, un I think it's what I'm doing, it's gonna be technically the same. I'm gonna explode it just so that I can actually make a SketchUp group of it versus an AutoCAD. It may be the same, I'm not positive. I just know that this typically works uh, better. So I'll go ahead and make it a group here in SketchUp so that I know that it's uh, an actual SketchUp group. So uh, yes, you will notice that even on your base file in or in your layers, you'll notice that any blocks that you may have imported, so like your bed, your dressers, your, your uh, kitchen components will all also be uh, their own layers here in SketchUp, okay? So before we start to extrude um, if, before we start to extrude all of our walls, let's go ahead and clean up this floor plan so that we only have the information that we need, okay? So it's great that we already added things like the kitchen and the furniture and all these little details to our AutoCAD floor plan, but we're not gonna need them in SketchUp, okay? We're not gonna model these objects in SketchUp so we can go ahead and get rid of them. So luckily, if you have a nice layering system in AutoCAD, it should be pretty easy to turn all of those objects off, okay? So anything, uh, just like in Photoshop or in AutoCAD, we have the option to make our layers visible and not visible, okay? So things like ray lines, if for whatever reason you see them, you can turn them off, but I'm gonna go ahead and take a moment to uh, to basically hide any of the layers that I don't want. So I don't need the bed, I don't need any of the furniture inside the, or any of the furniture or the accessories inside the bathrooms or the living room, okay? So you can turn off topography, you can turn off uh, hatch patterns if you currently see those. 
I'm also going to turn off doors. Okay, I don't even need doors. All right, I'm going to leave the windows on. Okay, I'm going to leave exterior walls on. Let's see, this looks good. Let's turn off the furniture. I'm going to leave the interior walls on. All right, so furniture. Oh, perfect. Look at that. Everything was everything was organized properly. So when I turned off that furniture layer, it turned off everything that I wanted to. Okay, let's turn off. Uh, let's turn off doors as well, or hatch patterns. Let's turn off doors. Okay, that looks good. So from here, this is basically what I'm looking for before I start to extrude all of my walls. Okay, is a nice, just very simple, clean. Uh, clean floor plan that shows only my interior walls, my exterior walls, and basically all of the areas where my doors are located. Okay? So from here, we can start to extrude all of our walls accordingly. Okay? So to do that, there's a couple different steps that we can take. All right? Now, I, I have one step that I usually take as the first step, and I'd say it works about 50% of the time. Um, so we'll see how, how well it works. Again, how well it works probably comes down to how well organized your CAD file was. Um, I noticed in a few cases, a few people were drawing their CAD files actually in the Z coordinate as well. So if you looked at your CAD file, Brian, uh, if you look at your CAD file uh, in 3D and you see your lines are all, you know, basically all uh, up and down in multiple different dimensions, this likely will not work for you because the CAD file, when you import it into SketchUp, will also import the same way. Okay? So what I'm going to do is with, with this floor plan grouped, I'm going to go ahead and take the rectangle tool, all right, and I'm going to draw a rectangle around this floor plan. Okay? So I'm going to draw the rectangle around the floor plan. And you'll notice that because my floor plan is all drawn in the zero Z coordinate, meaning it's all at zero, zero, okay, you'll notice that, that that rectangle I drew is also at the same plane as the floor plan, okay? And as soon as I add that rectangle or that square, I can select my floor plan and I'm gonna go ahead and explode it, okay? So I'm gonna click on explode, okay? And you'll notice that, and did it work here in my case? This might be an instance where it didn't work the greatest. It worked, it actually worked in about 50% of the cases that I wanted it to, okay? So you'll see that if I go over to this wall right here, you'll notice that it's already been grouped, or basically it's already created the, the, uh, the exterior perimeter boundary that will allow me to click on the push and pull button and make that wall whatever size I want it to be. Okay, but not it unfortunately didn't work with with all of them. So uh, that leads me to my next point and how we would start to to solve all that. Okay, so unfortunately that doesn't always uh, work the greatest. Sometimes it works really well for some of you it might, but if it doesn't, what you'll need to do is uh, let's first start out by creating a new layer. I'm going to create a new layer that's just for my 3D work. Okay, I want to keep all of my line work on a separate layer. Okay. Uh, but I want to make all of my work that I do with my 3D modeling all in its own layer. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and type in uh, 3D cabin. <coughs> type in 3D cabin. And let's go ahead and make this my active layer by clicking on the little bubble. Okay, and actually let me try, I'm going to delete that. So I deleted that rectangle here. You will notice that after you delete the rectangle, you'll see all of the walls that actually held their shape. So that one actually held the shape pretty well. Actually, yeah, probably about 50% of them uh, worked the way that I wanted it to. But if they don't, this is gonna be the next step, okay? So for example, right here, that didn't, our original step didn't work the way that we wanted it to, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on the pencil tool in my new layer, and I'm gonna simply trace that shape, okay? And make sure that when you're tracing that shape, that you try to pay attention for what axes you're drawing on. So remember that you have the red, the green, and the blue, okay? So you wanna make sure that you are drawing in the, uh, in the correct axes. And in most cases, uh, as soon as you draw that first line, it will fill it in for you. You can see here that I just drew that one line and it filled in the rest of that shape, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing. Use my pen tool 
and start to fill in the remaining shapes. So notice again, I just drew that first line and it filled in the rest of that shape. So that worked pretty well and that's pretty convenient. All right, so I'm gonna do the same thing for all the rest of my, and this one's not gonna be quite as nice, but if I draw the rest of them here, I should be able to get the end shape that I'm looking for. Let's see, there might be a disconnect there. So the reason why are, why are we not seeing that? Well, likely one of the lines that we drew is not quite on the same plane as the others. Okay, so this one's still not showing. There we go. All right, so there's that one. That's good, so it filled in that one as well. All right, I wanna go ahead and extrude up this this uh, corner post as well. So I'll use my rectangle tool. Notice that it filled in uh, a majority of the windows as well, so that's great. All right, I'll do the same thing on this post. Let's fill all of that in. The end goal of this exercise is that we wanna have a nice blue fill for all of our exterior perimeter walls so that we can easily extrude them up to get the uh, to get our exterior walls okay so there we go that filled in that one that's good let's go ahead and create that one perfect all right I don't need that I can go ahead and get get rid of that all right we can see here here's another interior wall go ahead and use my rectangle tool fill that in okay perfect Okay, so here we have, uh, now we should have all of our exterior walls to have that blue fill. So I can now take my push and pull tool and actually extrude them the distance that we want. All right, so the next question might lie is, well, how high do we extrude these? Okay, well, luckily you do have your CAD file in here that you can use for reference, okay? And you can use it for reference a couple of different ways. You can either uh, click on your ruler here and you can actually physically model or you can physically uh, measure what some of these dis distances so right here I know that this uh, this wall right here is 13 feet up to the roof so that's really easy I can simply extrude that 13 feet if you want but the other way that I'd recommend and this will actually set you up nicely for uh, the next step which would be to start drawing our windows okay and some of the other details is we can go ahead and take our elevations that we've drawn here and we're gonna go ahead and rotate them 90 degrees so that they're in the vertical dimension okay so to do that what I'm gonna do is I am going to take the rectangle tool and I'm gonna simply draw a box like so okay I'm gonna take that box and I'm gonna extrude it just a few feet what that distance is that doesn't matter okay the reason why I draw I drew this box is that I so that I have a reference item when I use the rotate command all right so I'm gonna click on that grouping that we just did all right and I'm gonna click on the rotate tool here and I'm gonna use this box as basically a device to rotate my 3d model okay so I'm gonna go ahead and make sure that I'm gonna use this side of the box I'm gonna click right here at the base at this corner and I'm gonna go ahead and rotate it 90 degrees Everyone see how I did that? So I'm just basically using that box as a platform to rotate my uh, my my elevation appropriately, appropriately, okay? And as soon as you're done with that, you can go ahead and select the box. I'm gonna deselect my elevation and you can delete it, okay? So I'm gonna do that for all of my elevations. So I'll really quickly just do that. Bear with me for a sec while I rotate all of these. So again, just drawing a quick little reference box for each of these. The size of it does not matter. All right, we'll do one more of them. Okay, that looks good. Okay, so again, I'm gonna select that elevation. I'm gonna click on the rotate tool Make sure that my rotate tool is on the correct face. I'm gonna pick the point that I want it to pivot from too. That's also an important one, okay? If you rotate this all correctly from the first time, or the fir uh, when you first do this, you won't have to go through and readjust it later, all right? So I'm gonna go ahead and pick the point that I want to pivot that elevation from, and I'll go ahead and rotate it up, okay? 90 degrees. So I'm gonna perform that same exact exercise to my other two elevations. 
All right, so I'll select the elevation, rotate, select my face, and voila. All right, we'll do that one more time. Select the elevation, rotate tool, pick my pivot point, and uh, let's go ahead and rotate that correctly. All right, so as soon as I've done that, done that with all four of my elevations, I'm gonna select all of those cubes and let's get rid of them. So I select all of it, deselect the, the elevation, same thing over here, deselect the elevation and delete the box, okay? So now we have four elevations that are all properly in line with our floor plan, okay? So the next thing that we can start to do is start to extrude our walls, all right? So I know that my entry, my little entry feature that I have here is this feature right here, okay? So if I use my push and pull tool, I can grab each of the different elements, I could start to extrude it, and I'm gonna simply go over it. Notice that there's a little dashed line right there, and I'm gonna simply just select the point where I want that wall to stop, okay? Notice that when I go over and select that point, that the wall is currently at the right height, okay? Actually, let me do something over here really quickly. And the reason why I'm gonna do this is because right now, our floor plan, and this is something that may or may not be the case for everyone here, but for my cabin, my, my, my interior floor is actually about five steps higher than grade, okay? So right now, when I was just extruding that wall, it was telling me that that wall was actually 16 foot tall. Okay, well, when, when in reality, it's actually not because my, uh, my exterior or my entry is actually sitting up here. So you could do a couple of, you can do a couple different things here. You can either extrude them the entire distance, the entire 16 feet, or you can select your floor plan and move it up to the right spot. So I can click on the move tool and I'm going to go ahead and move it up so that it is that distance and we can go ahead and just find out what that is here by going like that so two foot 11 all right so if you want to you could select that and just simply move it up in the blue z direction two foot 11 inches okay so now it's actually sitting a little bit higher than the rest of the uh the rest of the cabin all right so either way will work fine so i'm going to go ahead and uh, take my, uh, my extrusion tool, all right, extrusion. I'm gonna go ahead and start extruding all of my walls, all right. This one right here is actually gonna go up to uh, that point right there, all right. I'll extrude this wall to go up to that point right there. And you can see here that I can basically create all of my exterior walls in a matter of just a few seconds, all right. So I'm gonna start to extrude all of these using my elevations as reference points, okay, like that, until I've completed uh, each and every one of those. Okay, you can see here that I missed a couple of these spaces earlier, so I'll go ahead and fill all of these in. All right, use my pencil tool. Ah, perfect, and I'll get rid of this interior coloring. Don't need any of that, don't need that, don't need that as well. Okay, and that looks pretty good. So again, I'm gonna go ahead and use the extrude tool, or I'm sorry, the push and pull tool, and start to pull this up, come on now, so that it lines up with all of our elevations. Okay, so bear with me for about 30 seconds. I'm gonna go ahead and knock out uh, a bunch of these, all right, and then we'll come back to adding some of the other details. All right, so there's that one right there. There we go. Actually, this part right here is actually a little bit higher. Okay, does everyone understand that concept? Is that making pretty good sense? Okay. So I'll just do a few more. I won't watch you, won't make you have to watch me do all of them. There's no, there's not a way you can grab all the... 
do them all at the same time? Sure, you could. You could you could do multiple. So I could say I want to select. Um, let's see. Let's look at this elevation over here. Let's select all of the walls associated with this kind of taller feature. So yes, you could certainly expedite that a little bit and uh, and do that. So I'm going to select this one. I'm also going to select uh, this one right here. So I'm holding down shift. Okay, holding down shift will allow you to select multiple faces at one time. All right, and uh, let's see. Let's also select that one right here. Now, in, you might actually run into a few points where you might need to break it up a little bit. So right here, this would be taller. This area right here would be taller than this area right here. So you might need to take your pen tool and actually subdivide a few of those surfaces, okay? So you might have to extrude them even though on the roof, this area right here would actually still be a little bit taller. So we're gonna break it up even though we might end up joining it a little bit later, okay? But I'm gonna go ahead and select each of those surfaces. So we got one, holding down shift two, and three, and four. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and use my push and pull tool. What did I do there? Let's see, let's try that one more time. Oh, you know what, maybe you can extrude. I thought you could. Let's just try it one more time. No, okay, never mind. It's not gonna let you do multiple faces. But it should still be very quick. It should be a very quick process. Okay, so let me just do a couple more faces here and then I'm going to show you how you might start to accumulate some of the finer details, okay, things like the windows and your roofs. So this might be kind of a slow process at first if you're not used to working in SketchUp, but it'll start to become pretty quick, okay. So you can see that I've started to accumulate uh, you know, maybe about 50% of my walls right now, okay? I'm not gonna worry too much about my interior, okay? In a few minutes, we're gonna talk about components just a little bit, but let's look at how we might start to create some of these other, uh, these other pieces, okay? So, for example, we have a window here. How would we start to create that window? Well, if I take my pencil tool, and we're gonna touch base on this again next week when we actually focus on the actual, or refining our elevations, okay? But I'm gonna go ahead and draw a line from this point and I'm gonna go ahead and draw it over here to my model. And notice that it hits the edge of this, of this wall right here. So that's telling me that that's where that window would start. Okay, so I can then draw uh, a line over here to the other side. Notice that it filled in that bottom area. Okay, I no longer need that line. And I can actually delete these lines as well and that'll actually make that a continuous surface. All right. And then from here, I can use my pencil tool. I'm going to just fill in some of these edges. Notice that when I'm doing this, that I'm paying attention to what axes I'm drawing on. So when I draw that line across, I wanna make sure that I actually see that green line so that I know that I'm drawing that at a 90 degree uh, angle, okay? And let's go ahead and draw one more over here so that it also fills in that space on the back. All right, and then I can delete the lines as needed. All right, so there we just completed the bottom portion of what that window sill might be, okay? So I can continue to draw lines like so. I can continue to draw lines from our, our, from our elevation over to our plan over here. All right, notice that there I saw the green axis line. I wanna make sure that snaps to my face all right, and that tells us where that point would be, okay? And so now I've created the space for where that window would wanna be, all right? So I'm gonna go ahead and finish that, some of these little details. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and delete that right there, and I'm gonna delete this right here. Now we can approach this window in a couple of different ways. You could either, uh, actually let me just back up a little bit. Uh, you can approach this a couple different ways. You can either use the lines that you have available to you and you can actually start to create the window systems 
<coughs> you can actually start to create the windows as they are resembled inside uh, your CAD file. Okay, so what I might do, I have very little detail in my window and I would actually encourage you to actually get more. I'm basically just showing a double line to show the, the window frame, but uh, as, as it would likely would be, there would actually be a lot more details to that window. Okay, so, but what I could do is I could use my, uh, I could use my offset tool. So I can click on offset and I can make that window frame. So I'm gonna select that space. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and type in something like uh, two inches. All right, and that would be that frame, okay? Uh, I can then use my push and pull tool and I could say, all right, let's, uh, let's start to get some articulation for some of these different areas. Okay, now why isn't that, let's try that again. Okay, so I can start to say, all right, let's push that in a tiny bit. Let's maybe pull this out maybe an inch. Okay, so I'm starting to get some, a little articulation to the face of, of that window. Okay, now another option that you could do, okay, is you could actually use the 3D warehouse to find some of these different components, okay? Uh, before we do that though, let's talk about the difference between groups and components, okay? It's so the last class, we learned how to create groups by selecting the objects, right clicking, and then saying make group, okay? So someone here that knows a little bit about SketchUp, uh, let's go ahead and, and tell the class the difference between a group and a component. Does anybody know that by chance already? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, when you make a component, you can add it, like you can make an array of, uh, array of uh, stuff, and you only change one, then the rest of the array will change with the uh, component. So if you make a group, if you uh, copy multiple uh, group uh, items, then if you change, if you want to make change, then uh, the other stuff will not change. Exactly. So if you had to compare it to a command in AutoCAD, what would we command it? What would that be very similar to? If you, if you were to compare a component, a, a component to something that we would do in AutoCAD, do you know what that might be? A block. So it's basically the same as a block. So let me just go ahead and I'll say that a little bit louder. The difference between creating a group versus creating a component in SketchUp is that if you create a group, and uh, you copy it multiple times. Let's just say I, I was to, I created this window here. I selected all of the pieces of it, all right? So, uh, you know, I selected all of it here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna deselect, I'm gonna deselect these pieces right here. Okay, I think I have a couple more. All right, let me just deselect some of these. Okay, so right here I have all of those little pieces to that window. Now if I right clicked on it and I said make group and I copy that over to all of my other windows in my cabin, which I could certainly do, uh, that would definitely speed things up. But let's say I went back and I started to add more detail to that one window. It's not going to add all that detail to the rest of those windows that you just created. Whereas if I selected all of those and I right clicked and I clicked on make component, it basically works exactly the same way as a block in AutoCAD. So if I went through and I started to, you know, add some some different little details, and we added some inner trim, we added some, you know, you know, casement around that window, we added all these little details to make that a really nice looking window. It would reflect all of those changes in each and every one of those windows that you copied over. Okay. So that's one way you could do it. You can either create your own windows like I'm doing right now. And I'd recommend creating, if you look at my elevations, I have basically the same window in about eight different spots. So theoretically, I can create this really nice window and I can make a component out of it. And I can uh, select all of the different pieces, right click, make component, and copy it onto all of my other faces, okay? And that would really speed up the process of modeling this house. Now, let's look at another way that we could do it. So another way that you could do it is you can go over to the 3D warehouse and you can find a window that's already pre-made. Okay, so if you go up to where you see where it says components right here, I can go into where it says 3D warehouse and I could say uh, window, all right? And I'm gonna go ahead and hit enter and it's gonna search the database of 3D warehouse windows that are already created, all right? So I'm gonna find one that I think would work pretty well, all right? 
So here's like a nice little, and I know this isn't very big, but this little window here is a nice like, you know, lift up residential window. So maybe that's what you want, maybe it's not. But ultimately you'll need to take a few moments and find the window that best suits the architecture that you want, okay? If you don't find exactly the one you want, you can always download one that's similar and you could explode it and you could modify it so that it's exactly what you want, okay? So uh, let's go ahead and find one that we, that we like, okay? I'm gonna go ahead and use this window right here, okay? It's not quite as contemporary as I'd ultimately like, but it'll work for what we're doing, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and click on Window and I'm gonna click on Download, all right? We'll go ahead and accept the terms. It says, would you like to load this directly into your SketchUp model? Yes, I would like to do that. All right, and notice that here it's loaded it into the SketchUp model. I'm gonna go ahead and place it, all right? And what's nice about this component is that it already has a lot of those little details that you probably would create, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and rotate this, all right? I'm gonna click on it, rotate. I'm gonna use a face that uh, I can, I wanna, that is on the same plane as that, that I want. All right, I'm gonna rotate that 90 degrees. Oops, let's do it the other way. Okay, so that's 90 degrees. And I can go ahead and move it up into this space. Okay, so let me delete some of these lines. All right, bear with me for a second. I'm just gonna delete some of the lines that I don't need. Okay, just a couple more. And I can go ahead and take that window, use the move tool, and I'm gonna move it so that it fits right in that space. So something that I'm noticing actually while I'm doing this is that I actually didn't rotate that correctly. Okay, so let me bring that in again. Let's download that window. It's a fresh version of it. And let's make sure that this time we rotate it 90 degrees. I think I rotated it like 86 degrees or something goofy like that. There we go. 90 degrees, okay, this will work a lot better. So I'm gonna go ahead and use the move tool. I'm gonna grab, I wanna make sure that I move it at the insertion point that I wanna bring it in uh, onto the cabin. So I'm gonna pick that point right there because I know I want it to fit right into that space right there. And actually, lucky me, it's almost exactly the perfect size, okay? I guarantee though that most of the time that won't be the case. I'm probably about an inch off from it being perfect. Uh, but let's also make sure that it's the right height, okay? So again, I'm gonna draw a line over here, over onto my elevation so I, know, so I can make sure that it's at the right height. Okay, all right, perfect. So what we can see with this window is that it's not quite the right size. Luckily, we can go up to the scale button right here, scale. I can click on scale and I can start to manipulate uh, this window in a couple of different fashions, okay? So right here, that allows me to make it shorter and uh, taller. So that's nice. Right there, it just snapped, oh, no it didn't. But I'm gonna go ahead and move it up so that it is the same height as that line right there. All right, and ideally, I wanna be able to adjust this side as well. Unfortunately, I can't see that dot. There we go. So I'm gonna go ahead and move that over just that little tad. All right, and I'm gonna move that window now back into the correct spot. So that looks good. That's actually the size of that window that I want it to be and it actually corresponds with my elevation, okay? So I can now delete this line and I could fill in the rest of this wall, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and use my pencil tool and fill that in, okay? You can see here that it filled in that space but it also filled in some of the space here below this window. So I am going to draw another line right here to break that so that I can now delete that panel and now I can delete this line and this line, okay? And there we have one window, okay? 
So you'll need to take the time and add all of the respective details. Okay, you can either draw in, create your doors, or you can download the components that are already available to you. So feel free to kind of explore both of those different avenues. But you're gonna to wanna to take today to complete as much of this outer shell as you can, okay? Your goal should be to do mostly the massing. If you can get to some of the windows and some of the finer details on the outside, great. But for the most part, you wanna to try to complete your roofs and also co uh, complete, uh, you know, basically the massing, okay? So as soon as you're done with that, as soon as, the, you know, at the end of the day before we leave here, what you're gonna to wanna to do to, for this portion of the exercise, for exercise 25, is you're gonna to wanna to create a 3D, or a couple 3D views of the cabin, okay? And you're gonna turn that in, and that's gonna show me that you completed this portion. And make sure, all right, I see what, I see what you're doing. I'm gonna make you do it the hard way though. All right, so that's basically your goal by the end of today, all right? So with that said, go ahead and get started. If you have any questions, let me know. Go ahead and take a 10 minute break. So it's 7.33, let's come back at 7.43, all right? And we'll spend the rest of the class modeling our cabin, okay? Don't forget to save your work, because SketchUp is uh, it's such a sketchy program. <laughs> save as. SketchUp crashes on me at work like 10 times a day. I have Photoshop crash on me right before I finish this exercise 27. So does InDesign. InDesign crashes on me all the time, too. I didn't even start out. Let's see. So week 15A, 3D, cabin. Okay. <laughs> That's fine. We fixed it. Okay. So I for you. I did the work at some point. Just not at the proper point. Yeah, the problem is though, is now you're not going to be able because would you just import that into Max and then export it as a... 3DS and then pull it back in. So the problem is now, is that it, it's not going to look the way that you want it to look. Why? Well, first of all, I'd rather you add the tree in Photoshop. I mean, you can add certain can portions it. of it. Yeah, I can get rid of the tree. What's going to happen, unfortunately, is that when you uh, take a 3D view of this, and you start to work on the perspective aspect of this of this uh, of these upcoming exercises, you're going to see all of those lines. It's not going to look good. Can't erase. Uh, if you can go through and erase a lot of those items, isn't this a block then? Yeah, but can't make a lot. Yeah. And I just keep exploring. I would be. This is a problem you're going to start to have here. So I. If you want to spend a little time trying to make that work, I just unfortunately feel that you've taken all of these different steps to get up to this point, and now you're kind of in a tricky situation, and how do you deal with it? I want to explore it. So, you know, I understand the fact that you're going to have a hard time because this is a round building, and it's the way that we're demonstrating it here in class, it's not going to work exactly the same for you. So. I'll let you take the approach and how you want to build this front of all or how to build this cap. By the way, aren't they, because this front air triangulates everything, aren't they going to have this problem because there's no way we can do this curve without triangulating everything? So think of how, so what if this would be a canopy? Uh, yeah. I mean, you could definitely create that canopy. Oh, that's the curve. Canopy. Or a stair. No, it's canopy. Stairs are down here. Is the canopy sloping? Like, does it go down? It slopes and it's curved around the building, which is why I don't think I can do much better. I mean, I can erase extra lines, like whatever the heck this is, but okay. I think either way I can triangulate. Basically, you're going to be spending two days cleaning up this file. You know, it's either you're going to either you model it from you spend a couple days modeling it from scratch, yeah. or you spend a couple days cleaning up this. You know, really rough file. That Honestly, you're importing. because SketchUp is such a line, uh, straight line based program, I think I'm better off working with this than trying to draw curves. Yeah, and I, I might encourage you to, if you can get all of that tree on a layer, I could see SketchUp crashing with all those different polygons. It was, like, it was on actually a layer that was turned off. Which I'm wondering. Well, you can go in your layers, and it's going to retain all of those layers. Oh, okay. Oh, well, if you have it on it, if you want to re-import it. Well, let's see. You've you've done. I don't exactly know how this process. Works. I don't think I can layer 3ds. No, you can't. So I think that's where you lost all your AutoCAD layers. So half of what this 
the lecture started about was keeping your layers, keeping your layers and allowing them to work with you. I mean, the tree is luckily only a few pieces I can get rid of it. That's Especially okay. if I can enter into an X-ray format, can I do that on here? Like a 2D wireframe? Yes, I'm printing my app. <laughs> Oh, wow, that's pretty cool. Oh, There's actually a video of three of the... That's a live feed, just so I can see if anything goes wrong. I can only do it because we're on a local connection. Sure. That's pretty cool. I've never seen that before. So you're going to you're gonna have to take a different approach. Yeah. Oh, am I still recording this? Yeah, Yay, we're recorded. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I am. <laughs>